راجیہ سبا ٹی وی کا یہ بہت خاص پروگرام ہے گفتگو اور گفتگو میں آج ہیں ہمارے ساتھ بہت مشہور فلم کرٹیک رائٹر اور فادر آف فلم سٹیڈیز گیستوں رو بیرچ گیستوں رو بیرچ پادری اور فلم وششک گی فادر گیستوں رو بیرچ کا جنم 1935 میں کنیڈا کے مانٹریل شہر میں ہوا سکول کے دنوں سے ہی گیستوں رو بیرج میں فلموں کے پرتی دلچسپی تھی جو وقت گزرنے کے ساتھ بڑھتی ہی گئی اپنے کالج کے دنوں میں ہی گیستوں رو بیرج فلم کلپ سے جڑ گئے تھے جہاں انہوں نے ستی جیت رے کی بھی فلمیں دیکھی رے کی فلمیں دیکھ کر فادر گیستوں رو بیرج کے دل میں بھارتی سنسکرتی اور کلا کیلئے جو شوق پیدا ہوا وہ انہیں 1961 میں بھارت کھیچ لائیا بھارت میں انہیں ستی جیت رے کا خوب ساتھ ملا اور 1971 میں فادر گیستوں رو بیرج نے کولکتہ میں ایک فلم ادھین کیندر چتربانی کی استحفنہ کی فادر گیستوں رو بیرج نے بطور ٹرینر اور ریڈیو براڈکاسٹر بھی کام کیا ان کی لکھی کئی کتابیں فلم چھاتروں اور شودھارتیوں کے لیے ضروری سامگری اور انتر درشتی اپلبد کراتی ہیں آدھی صدی سے بھی زیادہ سمیہ سے سکری فادر گیستوں رو بیرج کو لیکھن کے مادھم سے کشل سمپریشن کے لیے 1999 میں راشتری فلم پورسکار سے سمانت کیا جا چکا ہے فادر گیستوں رو بیرج کا ماننا ہے کہ فلموں میں شیکشک سپرش ہونا ضروری ہے کیونکہ فلمیں سماج کے وکاس میں مددگار ہوتی ہیں آئیے نظر ڈالتے ہیں ایک عیسائی پادری کے فلم سمیقشک بننے کے سفر پر Welcome to the show, sir. I am very, very happy to share my thoughts on my life here in India and more, perhaps. But so first of all, I would like to ask you about your, uh, your life journey, I mean, your initial years. All the life or only the part in India? No, all the life. All the life. Well, I was born in Canada. Uh, from a French-speaking family. And uh, I lost my father when I, I was not two years old. And my, uh, we were four children. So my mother managed to uh, educate us. And uh, I decided to, to be a priest. It's very, very early. And uh, As the Lord guided me, I joined the Jesuits in Canada. And uh, sometime, one of my maternal uncle uh, came to Sri Lanka. He was a communicator, as if he had prepared my own uh, life. But he was a specialist in radar working for the aviation of Canada and he spent two years in Sri Lanka and when he came back to our place he was talking to us with such devotion about the Indians he had met in Sri Lanka at that time during the war so that uh, as a young boy I was wondering shall I ever meet these people and it happened it happened uh, as a young boy i became interested in cinema even in prim primary school because uh, our school was uh, showing us one film every week on the saturday where there was no class and uh, i was very much impressed by the experience there and um, I cut, when I joined the college there also in, uh, in Canada, uh, I joined the film club or film society of the college and continued to get interested. Uh, and since I, I had been interested uh, in India by my uncle, by what he was saying, and his uh, living room where he was talking to us, Next to him, there was a 
the skin of a tiger on the floor, and on the wall the skin, the skin of a snake. So <laughs> that made it uh, more uh, mysterious. And um, I began in the, to be interested in foreign films also, for foreign, I mean, not Canadian. And uh, at one point, some uh, film society in Montreal showed some films from Kolkata. Mm -hmm. And I read about it, uh, and uh, it was a trilogy about Oppu, the Oppu trilogy of Satoji Trey. And I read many uh, details about that, so I wanted to see it. So as a young Jesuit, I, I, I needed the permission to, to go. So I asked my superior, so he said, oh, and is it a really a good film? I said, what I read uh, says it's very important. And you are going to India? Yes, I said. Ah, then you see it when you go to India. <laughs> so, but then he was not just joking. He said, you tell two of your companions to go and see the film, not you. Some uh, several months after, I was on my way to India, and uh, I, I, my uh, superior had told me, "Oh, if you go in the east, go slowly." <laughs> Instead of going by air, I was told to go by boat. So, from Montreal, I had to go to New York to take a boat, and. Um, I saw in the newspaper that the Apu trilogy that I had wanted to see was being shown there, close by to the hotel where I was spending the night. So I went to see it. And really, for me, it was an introduction to India. And to see the three films in one sitting was asking the man a lot. It was difficult to digest the second and the third all in a row, but uh, Pater Panchali had a tremendous effect on me. How human, human these people were. And uh, when I came to Kolkata, I was very happy to tell the people that I had seen those films. And I mentioned that uh, the film that I liked best is when the two children, towards the beginning of the film, they secretly from their parents, they prepare some pickles together, and then they eat them. And there is a series of uh, shots, close-ups. The little girl is eating. She smiles. She gives some to Apu, the little boy, younger than I, and he smiles. So it goes. Uh, so I told her. Uh, the young, the people I was talking to on my arrival, that I had liked that very much. Not that they gave me the taste of the pickles, but the taste of joy, of the joy of children, pure joy. And uh, then a, a local scholar who was there and helped me, he said, oh, you perhaps don't know that this was the first film of Satajit Ray. You can expect in the first film that there may be some small flaws. And uh, the scene that you liked so much is a flaw in the film. Because you did not need eight close-up to tell you that the children were happy. So I did not argue because I, I was not prepared to argue on that. It took me quite some years to realize that Without knowing it, I had reacted in the Indian way to the film. Whereas this man was re not reacting, but uh, making some theory from a Western theory uh, about uh, how to tell the story and everything should end the story. But uh, that man, maybe uh, at, at that time, had not yet read the Natya Shastra, which I prefer to call Natya Veda, a, a, a book on drama, no? Anyway, it says that when you 
try to arouse the emotion through a scene or a, a dialogue, you reach a point where you cannot go beyond the emotion, not stronger emotion, and you have to get into something like a, a drama or especially a dance, dance and singing. So in, the, in, in a way, the two children, when they were eating and smiling, it was a sort of polyphony of their joy. That's why it touched me so deeply. So that was my uh, entrance, arrival to India. And uh, I kept on uh, thinking about the films that I saw and reading about and studying the Natya Veda very early, which uh, I found was not prescriptive, but descriptive of what is the good Indian drama. And you would expect a film from coming, uh, following that tradition, which is not always the case, but uh, anyway. So we will talk about uh, your contribution and your activities here in Kolkata later. But uh, as you told, uh, before watching uh, Apur trilogy, uh, you have mentioned in some other interviews and some other talks that you have uh, watched uh, uh, Battleship Potemkin and Bicycle Thief also. So these two films were uh, early. Uh, yes. Uh, early experiences yeah. uh, from uh, different countries, uh, Battleship Potemkin, because uh, Eisenstein, the maker, had a great influence on me because uh, I had been, uh, I, I would say, <laughs> I, would, I had been uh, taken up by Bazin, the French theoretician. And uh, Eisenstein and helped me to realize that uh, Bazin's so-called realism was a form of idealism. And uh, Eisenstein was proposing a more materialist approach. And uh, I don't know if I am a materialist, but I, I think I, I divorced from Bazin to an extent. Although I kept admiring many of the things that he has done, but um, uh, it, it was idealism. It was not a, 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 a real a, a reality that he was dealing with. And uh, when you compare uh, the way of uh, Western uh, film theory and the Oriental film theory, what is the major difference between the two? Well, uh, as it is based on drama, there, there are uh, basic differences. And the most basic is that uh, both are one to arouse the emotion, but they do it in a different way and for a different end. The Indian tradition is to arouse the emotion as I as possible, even up to the, the the theological ground, as it were. And uh, at the end of the film, the film loses you at that point. Whereas in the uh, Western tradition, they will arouse your emotion and release it. So you have a sort of purgation of that emotion at the end of it. Whereas the Indian is to elevate you as high as possible and make you discover uh, a, a union with other people at that level. And uh, whereas the, the story in the Western tradition is what matters. The story should be well, well told and not the slightest detail should be there if it is not helping the development of the story. So if Opu and Durga uh, uh, show us in eight close-up that they are happy, that 
delays the development of the story. But uh, scholars perhaps do not notice that in the Natya Veda or Natya Shastra, the author says that the development of the story must be flexible to integrate these uh, elements that arouse the devotion. So for the guest room, uh, I would like to ask you uh, why there is a need to study a film. I mean, watching a film is not enough. The reason is that you are the film that you see. Because what you show on the screen is not the film. The film is the imaginary sequence that is created by the viewer. That's the film. Well, if you tell the story from what is shown on the film, you won't make it possible for the person to really experience it. And uh, when you prepare your shots, you see it in such a way that the viewer makes some relationship between the shots, relationship that are not mentioned vocally. And if these relationships are not created by a viewer, the film doesn't take place. Now, if I say that I imagine those things, uh, triggered by what I see and hear from the screen, if I say that I imagine it, can I say that the film is in me? I can say more. I am the film. Two different viewers may be the film differently, but uh, generally no. Uh, because the first one to imagine the film is the filmmaker. And that is the experience that he translates in audiovisuals for us to see. And I found it very important in, uh, in the, at the beginning of the Natya Veda, they, they have some mythological stories with the gods gathering with Brahman and telling God that uh, the people are in problems and you must create a media that is seen and heard. Sight and sound, as the British would say. Chitrabani, as the, I would say. <laughs> and uh, that was because at that time, the, the four Veda th that were existing, uh, most of the time they were read publicly. And the Sudras were not allowed to attend. So they were illiterate and they could not hear what was. Now with the new drama and the mythological stories that Brahma uh, created the, the first drama. And that makes the matter somewhat religious for a person like me. And uh, I, I can quote someone Purposely, I don't remember his name. I love him and he's a nice person. Uh, I don't want to appear to speak against him, no. But he said, we want a new cinema that will be an art cinema for the elite. Mm. <laughs> if you take the Natya Veda, this is totally opposed to what is that the drama are for all without exception. Number two, the drama are all e educational. So they are positive and important in the life of the people. And uh, most of the time, they are a group experience. And now with the new uh, gadgets in our media, it's possible to see drama or cinema alone. And uh, I don't know if you s s experience that there is a difference to watch a film alone and to watch it with a group of people. Because the experience, the imaginary thing becomes 
somewhat uh, similar in all the people and that strengthens it. And uh, this uh, Chitrabani, you talked about uh, Chitrabani earlier. Uh, what was the idea behind Chitrabani and uh, how it uh, came into being? Well, the, the, the term that I mentioned was not the name of a center, but uh, this was proposed to me by a friend that uh, uh, Kabi Guru Tagore had uh, suggested Chitrabani as the equivalent of sight and sound of the British. And uh, when I wanted to create the center and I was talking as a, uh, the, the home of the movies or something like that, someone suggested Chitra Bani. And via Tagore, you, by using these two terms, you went to Nanantya Veda, who had asked Brahma and a, 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 a media that would have both the eyes and the uh, ears. To, when I read in uh, Aristotle, in his book on drama called Poetics, he described a scene plausible where you show something that is in practice practically uh, impossible, yet it can happen if you use your imagination. So uh, Aristotle said that you use plausible scenes to excite the imagination. And that's what people like. And I, I, I agreed with that. But you see, at the primary school, I, I was not taught these details. So for all these years, I forgot the scene. But when I read about not that particular scene, but about a plausible scene, I said, oh, but I saw one. I know what it is. I saw <laughs> I, I I woke up. So. I always felt that it was uh, uh, needed to help uh, our students to, to uh, integrate their experience. And now, when we are under the pressure of cultural globalization, it becomes very important. The class mentality is perhaps the greatest difficulty. So, because of the class mentality, uh, at Chitravani, I used to create every year a group, uh, a film study group. And again, to start, I would ask them what movies they have seen. Nobody would mention a popular movie. I belong to higher class. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> So after spending almost 50 years in uh, uh, Indian subcontinent cinema, what uh, I mean, what are the main things you learned about uh, this uh, kind of well, cinema? Well, certainly the the arousal of emotion and the educational uh, role of drama and belong drama-like cinema. So, and that uh, from the beginning guides me to respect the filmmakers because they are doing something very important and uh, they need to be supported also. So there are many kinds of uh, cinema exist in the whole subcontinent. But when you see uh, the ethos and the, the vision and the people's behavior, how you sum up uh, the whole experience? I am aware of that uh, uh, large amount of uh, films depending on the uh, languages especially. But uh, I'm afraid that in all uh, these years I did not uh, sense the experience, the differences from a Bengali film or a Tamil film. Uh, I, and I can sense that there is a difference because although the basic Indian culture is the same for all, uh, in practice the actual culture is different from one group to the other. 
So at the end of the show, I, I, I would like to ask you uh, what a film adds to a person's life. I think it is an, uh, an uh, important experience. Uh, because uh, as I say, by watching the images on the screen and the sound that come along, you imagine, because it's not that, it is, you, you, you imagine the thing which is not there. And uh, I, I think the cinema has a very great influence on all. And uh, I, I think it had a great influence on me also. That does not uh, say that books have nothing to do, etc. But uh, I think it has a great experience. And the scholars sometimes uh, do not help neither the filmmakers or the film viewers by their criticisms. If there's uh, something can be called uh, good or bad cinema, what is your yardstick to, uh, to measure the good or bad? Well, I, I did not specialize in that field because uh, I take any film at first positively. I uh, said, so, oh, so and so has made that film. <laughs> no. The bad films, uh, I, I cannot give any example now, but uh, I'm sure of what I, I say about myself. Uh, we should take it positively and uh, help the viewers to see what is bad in it without blaming the filmmaker or producer. Or so uh, the, uh, our uh, position as scholars is to help both the, the viewer and the maker of the films. And I think it is worth when we think of the millions of people that see movies. So, Father Gaston, with this question, I, I would uh, like to sum up this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for sparing your precious time. It was a pleasure to share with you. Thank you. Ye the Father Gaston Roberts, Indian subcontinent mein film studies ke pita mahamani jane wale Father Gaston Roberts ke saath aapko baatchit ka ye episode kaisa laga? Hamen likh sakte hain feedback.rstv@gmail.com par.